Okay, so the next problem is going to say the function that we're trying to deal with here and find the zeros of is f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6. And what we want to do is we want to factor that, that thing. And so when we can set it all equal to 0 and find the zeros, and that's what the whole point is. We want to find the 0. Okay, also given, okay, in the problem here, I'm going to put a little semicolon here. Given, okay, uh, x is equal to 2, or x is equal to negative 2, I should say. Negative 2 is a 0. It is a 0 of that polynomial. So the question is find all of the zeros, okay? The first thing we want to do is look at this and see that it is a third degree uh, polynomial, so it's going to have three zeros, three factors corresponding to three zeros, and we already have one of them given to us, so we've, we've really come a long way. Uh, we already have some of the answer here right before us. So we know right away, okay, I'm going to kind of box, box the uh, problem up here, okay? We know right away that uh, x plus 2 is a factor, okay, of f of x. And we know this because if you were, once we write it all down, when we set this equal to zero as one of the factors, x is equal to negative two is gonna come up as a zero, and that's how we can deduce that, okay? So what we really have found here is that f of x, which was given to us as two x to the third, minus three x squared, minus 11 x plus six, that's f of x, is equal to this factor, x plus two, which was given to us, really, times some unknown, okay? Unknown, some unknown. That's some, this is some other expression here, okay, that we're gonna end up being able to factor in the end and find the other uh, things. So don't forget in the end, what we're gonna get is we're gonna get this factor that we have times some other factor times some other factor. We're just trying to find out what those are, okay? And we really don't know how to do that yet without going cranking through the math here, but that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to find those, okay? So, because we know that the function is equal to this factor times something else, in order to find what this something else is, all we have to do is divide this x plus 2 into there, okay? So what we're really trying to do here is, and I'll just go ahead and use another color to make, to make more progress in here, what we'd really like to do is we'd like to take 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6 and divide into it x plus 2. Okay, because by taking the function and dividing x plus 2 into it, we're going to arrive at what we're trying to find, which is just whatever else is left over here. Okay, so that's what we want to do. And this would be a lot of ugly, uh, you know, long division. We don't want to do that, so we want to use our synthetic division because the divisor is in the form of x plus a number or x minus a number, and we talked about that in the previous problem. So what we want to do is our synthetic division. Okay, and what we're going to do here is we're going to drop down the coefficients of what we're dividing by. So we're going to have a 2, we're going to have a negative 3 for the x squared uh, coefficient, we're going to have a negative 11 for the x coefficient, we're going to have a 6 for the constant coefficient, and we're going to divide into it something related to this factor. We're not going to put 2 here, you have to put the corresponding 0, which is negative 2, because that is the 0 given to us, and if you set this equal to 0, the 0 that you get is going to be negative 2. That's the only real trick and gotcha to remember with uh, synthetic division. Okay. So now we're gonna actually do the division. You start out by dropping down the two, that's a freebie. And now you start multiplying. Negative two times two is negative four, so I write it here. And I add these up, because this is addition. Negative three plus negative four is negative seven, okay? So you write that down. Now you multiply again. Negative two times negative seven is positive 14. And now you add these. A little negative 11 plus 14 gives you a positive three. And then negative 2 times 3 gives you a negative 6, and then 6 minus 6 is 0. So this thing means there is no remainder, which is good. Okay? Because the last thing you get here should be a 0 if there's no remainder. So what we've done is we have divided this in, and we have the coefficients of the answer. So let's go ahead and write what, what the uh, answer is. Okay? So the answer to this division... The answer of this division is, starting here, you're going to have, or let's just start here, it's going to be 
x squared minus 7x plus 3. Because you start at your first non-zero thing on the right-hand side, that's your new constant term. The one to the left of that is the, is the uh, coefficient of x, and the one to the left of that is the coefficient of x squared. So the answer to the division is this. Okay, so what we have done in the end, okay, switching colors yet again, is we have said now that we know that f of x is equal to x plus 2 times what we have just found, because that's the unknown that we had talked about. 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Okay, that's what we have found. And now look at here. We have something here that we really can factor by hand because we should know how to do that. So we'll have x plus 2 times something times something else. And we just need to fill in those blanks. What times what can we put here? Well, we can put an x and we can put a 2x. That'll give us a 2x squared. Okay, that'll give us a 2x squared. And then 1 times 3 is really the only thing that can give us 3. So I'm going to put... Uh, 3 and 1 like this and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make a 7x in the middle okay I want to make a 7x in the middle so if I put a minus and a minus there let's see if that works out x times 2x gives us positive 2x squared negative 3 times negative 1 gives us positive 3 and then look at the inside term negative 3 times negative 2x gives us negative 6x and the outside term negative 1 times x negative x you add them together, you get your negative 7x. So that's why I had to arrange it like this and put your signs like this. So what we have done in all of this work uh, is find that f of x, which is a big expression, can be written as this factor times this factor times this factor. That is the entire point of what we were doing. Okay. So by setting f of x equal to 0, what we're setting is we're setting x plus 2 times x minus 3 times 2x minus 1 all equal to 0 and that means that each factor can be set equal to 0 individually to satisfy that. So what we will have then is we'll have x plus 2 equal to 0, we'll have x minus 3 equal to 0, and we'll have 2x minus 1 equal to 0. And if we look up here this first factor is going to basically say that this first uh, uh, zero is going to be x is equal to negative 2, just moving this 2 over to the uh, right-hand side. And this one is going to mean that x is going to be equal to positive 3, moving this 3 over to the right-hand side, adding it to both sides. And this one here is going to mean that 2x... Okay, and for this one, if I take this negative 1 and move it over, I'm going to have a positive 1, and then solving for x here, x is going to be equal to 1 half. Okay, So if the problem said what are the three factors, this is a factor, this is a factor, and this is a factor. Okay, And if the problem said what are the three zeros, then this is a zero, this is a zero, and this is a zero. Okay, Plot that function, that original f of x, the places where it would cross the x-axis would be at x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 1 half.